Ad blockers. I assume the majority of my audience already uses these, be it One Blocker or Ghost Free or UBlock Origin or any number of browser extensions. But the problem is, is these are all browser extensions. What happens when I want to block my TV from spying on me, or maybe it's my Hue Lights from spying on me? Well, I have the answer, and it's called Piehole. And I think you may have heard of this, but if you haven't, it's a open source project originally designed to run on Raspberry Pis. This is super lightweight stuff, and it only takes about five minutes to set up on your Mac. The way that Piehole works is both brilliant and simple. It's a middleman DNS. So if I type in a domain name and it tries to access another domain name that's on its block list, that request will fail or return a null value. But if it's a domain name that's not on that block list, it'll get forwarded to a real DNS. So to break that into human speak, it's like a phone book. If I dial a legitimate phone number, I'll get that person. But if I dial an illegitimate phone number for a spammer, it'll just give me a busy signal. And now that I say that out loud, I realize anyone under the age of 35 has probably never touched a phone book, but whatever. So a DNS server or domain name server is just a database that contains all the names of all the websites in the world and has numbers associated with it. So if I type in google.com, you'll get google.com's IP and then you can access that website. The magic of Piehole is pretty simple. It maintains a list of known hosts for advertisements and if a request asks for the domain name that's on the block list, it'll return a null or fake address, thus preventing an advertisement or tracking script from loading. What makes this approach special is this platform agnostic. All it takes is manually configuring your devices or home network to use Piehole instead of your regular DNS. Plus Piehole has a nice easy to use interface that makes it easy to adjust. I have a MacBook 2017 and like all Intel Macs, soon it will be unable to run modern Mac OS, even with open core. The MacBook 2017 is an oddball model. I love this machine, but it's pretty underpowered, so there's not really a huge use case for it. It does have one thing that makes it particularly attractive, and this is kind of surprising because it's an Intel era computer. It's power draw. The maximum this guy can draw is about 29 watts, but it'll generally draw more like 10 watts, even with the display on. Plus, the CPU is just positively monstrous compared to the CPUs found in Raspberry Pis. So we're going to use this as our Pi Hole Mac. Step one, we need to download Docker, and Docker is a utility that lets you run containers. Think micro virtual machines. Docker has Linux and Windows versions as well, and I'll touch later on using Linux with two different NAS systems. Once it's installed, double click to launch it and give it the necessary permissions. Next, we're going to open up the terminal and we're just going to run this big ass command. This will be in the description and also as a blog post and GitHub gist. Paste it into the terminal and hit return. I'll break down what this command is actually doing later in the video, but let's keep moving forward. It'll take a second to download, but this project's small and lean. Remember, this is designed for Raspberry Pi. Once it's done, we can verify that it's working by going to Docker and seeing that our container exists and it should have a green light next to it. Step three, go to your web browser and type in 127.0.0.1 to hit your local host. It should bring up this web page and click the link to get to the min login. The min password is going to be the password we set in the command. So I'm going to grab it and paste it in. All right, it looks like it's working. So now for our final step, step four. In our system preferences, we need to go to network, find our active connection, and set our DNS server manually to 127.0.0.1. And of course, save your changes. Now, if we go to yahoo.com, we can see that's blocking an advertisement at the top of the screen. If we stop the container or Docker itself, we'll need to change our DNS back because our DNS server at that point would no longer be running. All right, we covered running it locally, but now I want to make my Sony TV use this DNS too. First, I need to grab my computer's local IP, and there's multiple ways to do this. You can do it easily through the system preferences. But before we do that, let's check to see if it's working for my Mac Pro. I'm going to run the command dig at 192.168.50.134 google.com. This will query the DNS server to see what it returns. And sure enough, it returns google.com. That means my MacBook is responding to DNS requests. I should also note that on my MacBook, I have my firewall disabled. That may or may not make a difference. Now on my Sony TV, if I go into my network settings, I can set the DNS to my MacBook's IP. 
Now my Sony TV is using the Pi Hole for its DNS and Sony can't do a damn thing about it. However, we don't need to manually configure every device. From my router, I can configure my DNS to use the Pi Hole, and it's pretty similar to the Sony TV. Just find the appropriate web pane interface, then I'll assign my DNS's IP to the MacBook. This should go without saying, but this computer needs to be always on and never go to sleep so it can respond to DNS requests. Now there's one network geek thing that you need to be aware of, and that's DHCP, because almost everyone uses this, and it's a way for dynamically handing out IPs. It's not very important, but DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. When you connect a device to a network, it needs to grab an IP that's not already in use. The problem is, is DHCP leases these out for an interval of time before it renews. That means potentially the IP could change. Most routers include a way to reserve IPs so that they will never be leased out to another computer. So when using Pi-hole, you want to be aware of this feature. That way your Pi-hole doesn't change its IP and create a lot of headaches. Remember how I said it didn't need to run this on a Mac? Well, I have a Synology and Ugreen NAS, and the process is nearly identical on both. The main difference is we'll be making a Docker Compose file. This is just a YAML configuration file. And let's just configure everything we did in the terminal command, but with more options and flexibility. And then I hit run. It's a little different on the Ugreen versus the Synology. And of course in the written guide, it'll also include my Docker Compose file as well as more instructions. And depending on your server or NAS, you may have to do some port configuration. Since my NAS is running multiple services, I did need to configure my ports to forward. Since I was just talking about the command, let's demystify it a bit. I'm going to give you a cheat code, and it's using AI. Just copy and paste this command into ChatGPT or Claude or whatever, and you can ask it to explain this command in detail. However, there are a few settings you might want to change. The first is TZ, which is the time zone, and you'll want to set that for the area of your world, and you can find this on Wikipedia or just ask AI for your time zone in this format. Next is API password, which is the password you'll use to access the web pane interface. You of course want to change this. Next is the DNS upstreams, and the way that Pi-hole works is if it doesn't find something on its block list, it'll forward it to a DNS server. I personally have this set to Cloudflare, but you may want to change this to another service like Google or something else. And finally, we have the restart command, and I have it set to restart unless it was explicitly shut down. So if I reboot the computer, Docker is already set to open at launch by default, and then it'll start up this project. That way I don't have to manually restart Pi-hole. That's basically it for setting it up. There's more you can configure inside Pi-hole if you want to make different block lists, but there's videos out there to do that. Again, this doesn't take a very powerful computer to run as it's designed to run on Raspberry Pi. I thought this was a fun and geeky project that most people probably could do on a weekend without a lot of time or effort and get a lot of gains. I'd like to thank my Patreons, as always, for sponsoring me, and I wish I could do more for you guys, but you guys are the best. You're the reasons why I keep this mid-roll ad-free. If you're looking for more geeky networking or Mac projects, check out the videos behind me.